My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day and expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Lyon. Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan investigator, stand by for hard-boiled action, mystery, and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Man in the Door. Well, this is the way it started. The lion called about four o'clock that afternoon, said he wanted to see me down at the office. I argued a while, finally told him I'd be there. Melody was sitting in front of her typewriter when I came in, putting a new coat of paint on her nails. She handed me a blank contract with no dates filled in, jerked a thumb toward the lion's den. I went in. Regan, I'm glad you got here. What do you know about architects? They draw things. I know that much, but what about bids and all that stuff? Well, they figure out what a building's going to cost, don't they? Go on. If whoever's paying for the building likes what they write down, then they're hired. A couple of architects, maybe three or four, make bids. I suppose so. Low man gets the job. Why? Our client's an architect named Dudley Hayes, an office in the Park Central building. He thinks maybe the bank that's handling his bid might try to put something over on him. Banks don't do things like that. He thinks maybe a guy who works at the bank might be taking dough to shove his bid under the counter. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Because I'm saying it now. Haynes wants us to look into it. All right, who do I see? Haynes first. We only talked to him on the phone. I told him we'd have to have a contract and retainer before we did anything. That figures. So hop over there and find out what's what and make him sign that contract and get a check. Anything else? Make sure it's certified and call me if you run into any trouble. <laughs> Dudley Haynes, architect, Park Central Building, had an office on the ninth floor. When I went in, a girl with hair that figured to be blonde right down to the roots pulled off her glasses and put out her cigarette. And she kind of eased out of her chair behind that desk, moved toward me, like a panther looking for a meal. Ma, you're tall, aren't you? Well, there's nothing I can do about that. Mr. Lyon said he was sending us one of his best men. He always says that. I think he meant it this time. He's an awful liar, lady. Dorothy. Dorothy Nolan. Fitz. The name or the dress? Both. What's yours? Jeff Regan. Oh. Well, now we know each other. That's nice. I came to see Haynes. He wants me to look into something for him. I know. He's expecting me. I know. Well? I hope you have to look into a lot of things. For Haynes? No. This is his office, isn't it? Mm hmm. But he spends most of his time in 902 into the hall. Makes his blueprints up there, I'll take you. You are too. <laughs> Well, we started down the hall. We got about ten feet from the frosted glass door at the end. We both stopped. We were looking at the outline of a big man behind the door. Both of us expected him to open it and walk out. Oh, he came out all right, but he walked right through it. Oh, he's been shot. Oh. Do you know him? My boss, Mr. Hayes. No, it was your boss, lady. He's dead. Lieutenant Salvatore Wendetti, Central Homicide Detail, showed up about eight minutes after I called. He had his whole goon squad with him and a couple of guys in double-breasted suits from the district attorney's office. They roped off the entrance to the building, got hold of the elevator operators and the man who runs the cigar stand and asked some questions. Then when Daddy looked at what was left of Haynes okay, and started man, yelling into a phone. Okay, don't move until my fingerprint boys get through. Yeah. Okay, sis, where the guy lives? Well, at the Biltmore Hotel. Where's his wife? We didn't have one. What do we tell? We didn't have any family. So no one's going to cry. Well, that makes it easier. Regan, was he your client? No, nobody's a client until he signed a contract, Sally. Well, you would bring him a contract to sign, and then you would do something for him. What? Well, I didn't talk to him. Sis? 
after Mr. Haynes had made an estimate on a little office building in Beverly Hills, he thought that a man named Adler at the bank might be taking money from someone to hold his bid out. So he wants an investigator to look into it. Why do you think that? Well, I don't know. You work for him? Well, I don't know everything. Neither do I. Hot, isn't it? Who's Adler? Oh, did I have to name him? Mm. Who else? Who else? Architects. Who else was making a bid? Well, I don't know that. Now, where are we? Uh, Kelly! Yes? Guy named Adler at the uh, Grand, National, Grand National, Bank. National Bank. Pick him up and have him down to my office in half an hour. Yes? Uh, what do you want to do about reporters, Sally? Tell him to go jump in the lake. Yes. They always spell my name wrong. How long have you two known each other? An hour. Nice. What do you mean by that? Just nice. Didn't hear any shots? No, we didn't. Tell me more about the bid. Well, what's better to tell? The setup. Well, the bank handles the money. Who says yes? Who says no? Well, the bank, but... But what? Uh, the contractor usually tells them who to take. Ha! Huh. Who's in Who's that in this case? A uh, contractor in Long Beach. His name is George Cantrell. Hmm. I'll say this for you, Regan. When you get mixed up in anything, you certainly get mixed up with the good-looking people. I'm not mixed up in anything. What do you say, sis? <laughs> I'll keep my mouth shut. Uh-huh. She's a smart girl, Regan. Uh, hello, honey. Won't be home for dinner. Some guy got himself killed and I'm in on it. Not long home. Hmm. Regan? Hmm. I'll tell her. Wife says hello. Says come out to dinner sometime. Whoop. Uh, sis. Uh, how much that contract worth? Oh, on the building in Beverly Hills, about uh, forty thousand dollars. Profit? No, overall. Break it out. Well, Mr. Haynes would have paid about twelve thousand dollars if he'd gotten. I know some guys have killed for a dime. Uh, Sam, when Daddy? I'm still at the Park Central building. Get out to Long Beach and talk to a contractor named George Cantrell and uh, find out what architects were making business and stuff he was going to put up in Beverly Hills. Yeah, get the name. Okay, that about does it. Let's go. Uh, Miss Nolan? What? I have to take you down. Well, Jeff, can you do that? Uh, you're a material witness. Well, what are you? He's a bystander with a built-in lawyer. Well, I do, Dad. Go with him. Why do you want to spend the night in jail? I just work for Miss Dad. Uh-uh, no phone call. This is a murder case. Well, get me a lawyer or something, Jeff. Do you know a lawyer? No. Wait, yes, I do. His name's Dave Henderson. He lives at 1648 Claremont Place. Will you get for me? Tell him I'm in trouble. Yeah. Check, Sally. She didn't make a phone call, I like her, too. Well, look, he may not be able to do anything for you tonight. It's almost six. But you'll see him as soon as possible? Yeah. Tell him I'm scared, Jeff. I'm scared, Steve. Well, I stayed there and phoned the lion, told him what had happened. Oh, well, he got mad and yelled something about me being a jinx on all our clients, and then he hung up. So I went through the classified telephone directory under attorneys and Henderson. There was a Ben, a George, a Joe, a William, but no Dave Henderson. So I drove out to the address that she'd given me was a blue apartment house four blocks west of Vermont over by the Coliseum. Somebody was cooking hamburgers somewhere, and somebody was all worked up over a ball game on the radio. I picked the baseball fan. Well, what'll happen now is anybody's guess, but let me tell you that this ball game is a long way from being up. A... Hey, what'd I tell you? What'd I tell you? It's outside the ballpark, and they're coming in like homing pigeons. Bases are loaded, and they're all coming in. Oh, it's going to be eight to five. Come on, come on. The ball game's not that good. What's so important, Pilgrim? I'm with the ball game. I'm looking for a man named Dave Henderson, a lawyer. So what? Well, somebody told me he lives in this apartment house. Who told you that? A lady. Huh? Does he live here? You try looking at the mailbox? No name. You cop? Private type. Huh? Does he live here? Sure he lives here. Well, where? End of the hall, 106. Thanks. Well, he's a lawyer, is he? With his kind of friends? Huh? What does that mean? You're young, ain't you, Curly? I got a driver's license. Let me tell you something. Don't go knocking on no doors and hear a ball game. Remember that. Yeah, I'll remember that. And you can tell them Tessie Bogart has talked to that one. And the score is eight to five coming into the first half of the ninth, and this has been some ball game. Let me tell you. No six. Here we are. Come on in. It's unlocked. Your name Dave Henderson? Yeah, who wants to know? My name's Regan. I'm a private investigator with the International Detective Bureau. Wrong, steer gum shoe. I don't need one. Look, I'm not looking for work. I'm looking for you. What'd you say it was? Uh, Regan? That's right. R-E-G-A-N. Regan. Regan. Learned that just an hour ago. Cute, huh? I met a friend of yours today. Dave Henderson never had a friend. She said she was a friend of yours. But I didn't say it was a friend of hers. Hey, who are we talking about anyway? Dorothy Nolan. How is Dorothy? Not so good. Thought you were a detective. I am. You sound like a doctor. Look, you sound like a guy with a chip on his shoulder. 
sound like a lot of things. You're trying to be tough, Pete. No wonder you aren't in the telephone directory. I'll just skip that. She said you were a lawyer. They say I drink too much. You haven't seen me drinking, have you? She wants you to get in touch with her. The man she was working for was murdered today. She kill him? Well, they're holding her. Material witness or a suspect? Material witness right now. She doesn't want to spend the night in jail. Who does? That's why she isn't feeling so good. Huh? <laughs> she wants me to get her up. Something like that. Who's handling the case downtown? A detective named Wendetti. Yeah, and where do you come in? Well, I didn't give her that one phone call. Yeah. You're sensitive. What if I said no? Well, that's your business. You know why she asked you to see me? Because I'm a guy she knows. And every guy who knows little Dorothy does a little something for her. Ever met him like that, Ruby? Sometimes. I'm just checking. Checking what? She's pretty good with the works. Eyes just right for the job. Hair just right. Everything just right. She can make you do a lot of things you don't want to do. Wait till you see her in a bathing suit. Ooh, that's something, brother. Well, they aren't wearing them in the county jail. <laughs> okay, I'll find, phone with Daddy and find out what her bond is. Look, this is a murder case. There's no bond on this. You know that. Well, it depends how you handle it. I'll think of something. Yeah, I'll bet you will. We don't like each other much, do we? Nope. That's the way it goes. Listen, she said to tell you she was scared. Well, some of us are scared part of the time. And somebody gets shot. And everybody gets scared. Are you scared? Nope. Iron Man Regan. Have a good time. Did I say Haynes was shot? No. You didn't say a thing. See you somewhere, Peter. Well, I stopped by Muso Frank's and had the special, and then I went on home. I tried to make a couple of calls, but when Daddy was out and the desk sergeant thought I was a reporter, and he wouldn't tell me a thing about Dorothy Nolan. While I was sitting there, the phone began jumping around on the hook. Regan? Yeah. This is me. Where you been? Called your place 20 times, but I've called it once. Well, I've been busy seeing a lawyer. What do you need a lawyer for? You aren't married. Somebody else needs one. Who? Dorothy Nolan, that blonde who worked up in Haynes' office when Daddy's holding her. Good. I want you to go down and see her. What for? We can still make something on this thing if we play it smart. When I talked to Haynes on the phone this afternoon, I told him I wanted a certified check. So what? So that means there's a check for 100 bucks lying around his office somewhere. And it's made out to international. Look, he's dead, remember? Everybody dies. Don't worry about it. We weren't even hired. We had a verbal contract. We had nothing. That check's no good to anybody but us. We didn't do anything for him. Well, buy him some flowers. Now hop down to the pokey and see that dame and find out where that check is. We can't do that. I talked to Harry Presidio and he'll give us a lead to get in. Hello? Hello? Regan, you're still there. I was still there, Hello? but I wasn't listening to the lion. I was looking at a skinny little man with one leg. Hey, Regan, you're still there. Now, don't ask me how he made it inside my door. He was just there, propped up on a pair of crutches, swaying back and forth, watching me with a couple of sick gray eyes that were so full of water you'd think they were going to float right out of his head. All at once, he went down like a busted sugar sack. He'd been shot twice through the neck with a small caliber gun, a 25, 32, I don't know. I, I found a dozen razor blades in one pocket and two dozen sets of shoelaces to go with him. There wasn't anything that told me his name, but there was a picture inside his shirt pocket. One of those things that you have taken in a penny arcade, you know, in front of phony pasteboard props. Well, a man with one leg was looking out from between a pair of painted angel's wings. And the guy standing next to him, who was smiling up at the halo, was the same man that I'd seen that afternoon. An architect named Haynes. A man who needed the private detective. A man who walked out a glass door and then dropped dead. And the one printed word above that picture stuck out like a wart on an egg that said, Happy Land. <laughs> Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Here is a special and important message to every businessman listening. 
to every businessman, regardless of the size or the type of his business. Gentlemen, do you realize that the schools of this community help you every day that you're in business? That's right. For one thing, our schools teach the boys and girls of this community to cherish the human right, the free enterprise on which our country and your business are founded. With each new generation graduated from our schools, the Army defending our way of life and your business grows stronger. What's more, good teachers and well-equipped schools do a better job of developing our children's talent. The result? School graduates have become more skilled and more efficient employees. So remember, any time and taxes that you contribute to improving local schools are an investment in your own business future. Education is good business. Education can maintain our freedom. And freedom is everybody's job. And now, back to the story of the man in the door and Jeff Regan, investigator. Well, I left the little man with the one leg lying there. There wasn't much I could do for him. I wanted to wait before I called homicide. I took the picture I found in his pocket and I drove to Happy Land. It turned out to be an open-air penny arcade on 5th and Main. It smelled like all the hot dogs in the world had been made right there. There were machines all over the place telling you how strong you were, how rich you'd be, and who you'd marry. <laughs> all for a penny. I guess it wasn't much of a bargain. The only customer was a sailor trying his luck at the shooting gallery. Back in the corner... Uh, a tired-looking girl in light blue slacks and a dirty gray sweater was sitting on a stool by the hot dog counter staring at nothing. Want some pennies? Not right now, no. Oh, just looking? Go ahead. When you figure out where you're going to spend your money, come back and I'll give you some change. You got a picture gallery here? Oh. Don't tell me you're a real big spender and want to have your picture taken. Maybe. You got one? Yeah, we got one. Where is it? In there. You really want to get your picture taken, I'll climb off this stool and take you back. I want to tell you now, if you're just trying to be sociable, you can go and fly a kite. You run the picture concession? I run the picture place and the hot dog place, and I sweep out in the morning. Oh, I wish I had better brains than to marry that slob and get myself stuck in a cheap dump like this. All right. Do you remember taking this picture? How would I know I take a lot of pictures? Well, come on, look at it. Oh, I know right. Yeah, I took it. That what sold you? When? How do you think I am? Can't remember what night it is every time a pair of drunks comes in and wants their pictures taken together. Well, try to remember, will you? <laughs> You're a real wise guy, mister. You don't want no picture. You just want some talk. You're a cop. Friend. I met the little guy in the picture once. Dusty. What was that? I thought you said you met him once. Well, we weren't introduced. I just met him. Who is he? Dusty Rhodes. He works the circuit. What circuit? Fifth and Main, STEM. Business section. What kind of business? Dusty handled the razor blade and shoelace traffic. He hates pencils. What did he do when he wasn't working? What does anybody do? He went out and got loaded. Go on. And you don't know him very well for a friend. How am I going to know I'm not getting dusty in trouble talking to you like this? Nobody can get him in trouble anymore, lady. What do you mean? He was shot tonight. Oh, no. Oh, poor little guy. Do you know where he lived? Seashore Hotel. The Seashore Hotel. Oh, gee, Miss Dempsey. Oh, I'm real sorry. Brother, the Seashore kid is to many types of people, good and bad, just out of the pokey. Two bits a night for transients, 150 a week for solid citizens. And sign and register. It's a law. I'm not looking for a room. Then you're wasting my time, brother. My beer's getting warm. Look, I'm a private investigator. My name's Regan. 
I liked you before you said them two words, brother, but you have soured me. Private investigator means private eye, and it all means cop. And you are not welcome, not blow. I'm trying to find out something about a man named Dusty Road. We do not ask questions, and we do not give answers, now blow. I was told he lived here. You find me tongueless, brother. Now blow. Did you know him? During the last five years, I have acquired 85 pounds and a very bad heart. All right, have you in the alley right now. Oh, yeah, sure you will. Here. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln was a very fine man, and he took a very fine picture. I seem to have found my tongue, brother. Will it be? The key to his room for a starter, huh? Uh, disallowable and punishable by fine and imprisonment. Into the hall, turn the Ben Festo to the right. Thanks. Well, I don't know what I expected to find there, outside of more razor blades and more shoelaces, with a little room full of dirty white curtains and a wire bed that sagged in the middle. I was standing there watching a neon sign advertise beer a block down the street when I thought I heard somebody behind me. Whoever it was had been drinking bad whiskey, but he was still pretty good. Ooh. It landed a quarter of an inch above my right ear, and I piled up in a lamp, a chair, and a pitcher full of water. Five berries get you a look, brother, but doesn't get you a room. Besides, it's already taken, and the bed's over there. Now, come on. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't go to sleep, brother. You was knocked to sleep. Oh. I apologize. Why the games? Who came in after me? You're the only one. You sure? My name's Sam Preacher. Brother, I'm very sure. Well, maybe he was waiting for me, huh? I don't generally ask him, but the question is this. Why? Oh, I don't know. Unless... What's the matter? Something missing? Just a picture. You can get lots of pictures. You didn't see anybody? That makes the third time, brother, and the answer's still negative. Okay, okay. Then let's blow, buddy, huh? Coroner's office. Luke, this is Regan. The lion's eye. What's with you, baby? When Daddy tells me you walked into one today. Yeah, I did. You got him there? Haynes Dudley? Sure. Want to come down and take a look? He's toe tagged and salted down real pretty. Yeah, I'll bet. Them 32 slugs was just incidental. The guy had four weeks at the outside. All right, give it to me. Haynes Dudley was dying from malnutrition, alcoholism, and a couple other things with long names. Give me one long name. Diabetes. He didn't take good care of himself, funny, huh? A misspent life. <laughs> Somebody's got to take the gas chamber for nothing. <laughs> when Daddy know this? Sure, sure. And he was wearing a brand new suit, too. We'll sew up the holes, we'll bury him in it. Well, you aren't finished yet, Luke. Baby! A guy with one leg dropped dead in my place a couple hours ago. It's after 11. Well, I'm sorry, Luke. They connected? Yeah. Murder? Yeah. Uh, well, come down and see us any time, Regan. We're open 24 hours a day. Well, at the homicide office, they told me she'd been released about 10 o'clock. They said a lawyer named Henderson had put up the bail and handled the whole thing. They gave me an address on her when I went out there. It was a bungalow court on Normandy, and it took her a long time to answer the door. Oh, you? Yeah, tell me how tall I am. Well, I'd love to, but not right now. They told me you'd been out since 10 o'clock. Maybe I should have come sooner. <laughs> Dale gives me the willies. I'm about to take a shower. I was kind of hoping we could have a drink. I did better than I thought with you. I got a hold of a lawyer for you, didn't I? Yes. Well, doesn't that rake me an invitation to have a drink? I said later, I'm really tired. I, uh, I said no. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, if you're that thirsty, all right. That's better. Isn't every day my boss gets killed and I meet a private detective? I need a drink. I was slugged tonight. Slugged? Yeah, right here, see. Oh, it looks nasty. Why did anyone do that to you? Wanted a picture I had. Whistler's mother? Just a picture of a couple of drunks who are dead now. Maybe whoever did it was a relative. Guess again. I don't like games. But you play them all the time. But we all, I know a psychiatrist says we can't help ourselves. You can. I liked you when you walked into the office this afternoon, but I'm not so sure I like you now. Maybe you better go. 
Expecting somebody, huh? Will you let go of me? Let go of me. Oh, no, me. baby. You've got real nice eyes. I want to look at him. Let go. He's crazy. You. Hello, Dave. We didn't hear you knock. Did you bring your piano? What's the idea? He gave me... Why don't you tell him to go away, baby? Anybody can tell we're busy. Let her go, Regan. You want to break us up? Can't you see he's just trying to make you jealous and say things? Come here, honey. No! You don't have to do that! I said let her go. Is that the same 32 you killed the one-legged man with? Over, gum show. Don't be a fool. Stay right where you are, baby. You're first. Listen to me, baby. I listen to you too long. He's only guessing. He doesn't have any proof of anything. You can cry if you want to, baby. This is going to hurt. She spun around and fell into a coffee table and then lay very quiet on the rug. Her eyes were open and she didn't say anything. She just lay there looking up at him. I couldn't tell where she'd been hit. He seemed to forget all about me because he walked over to her, knelt down beside her, put the gun right up against her head. This is awful close range, baby, but I can't afford to miss. (laughs) Neither could I. Well, when Daddy and I stuck our heads together and it all came out when we looked into a couple of things. You see, Dave Henderson was Dudley Haynes, and he was wanted for attempted murder and embezzling and one thing or another back in Ohio. So he figured it'd be a good idea to bump himself off. Dorothy helped him with the idea. They both went down on Main Street and they picked up an old bum, dressed him up in a new suit, and shot him. I was supposed to walk in with Dorothy and she'd identify the body and as far as anybody knew, Dudley Haynes would be dead. Dave didn't figure that she'd be taken down. She didn't figure that she'd get scared. And neither of them figured the man with one leg was a pal of the man that they'd shot. Well, it seems that they'd looked through a lot of files and they'd figured that a lot of murders go unsolved. Maybe they do. I don't know. Well, anyway... He sat down on that little bench up there in San Quentin last week. The one with that bucket of acid in the room. Oh, he held his breath as long as he could, but everybody has to breathe. He's buried up there with a lot of other guys that figured they could get away with murder. Dorothy? Ah, she wasn't hurt too bad. They had her in a wheelchair for the trial. She got 15 years as an accomplice. Some kind of a deal. State's evidence and all that. I don't think I'll wait for her. She wasn't that good. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS at 9.30 next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Written by E. Jack Newman and produced by Sterling Tracy. Dorothy Nolan was played by Betty Lou Gerson, and David Ellis was Dave Henderson. Lorreen Tuttle, William Conrad, and Lou Krugman supported. It's perfectly natural and wholesome for some men who want to leave great wealth behind. There's a druggist in a small town in Pennsylvania who'll do that. The wealth he'll leave behind will make many lives easier and happier and finer down through the years. For he was the principal donor of an outdoor meeting place for religious services in a Boy Scout camp in the Poconos. Working with his neighbors and community activities, he saw the need of this improvement, helped to install it. That's the kind of wealth that you can bequeath to generations coming on as you enjoy the freedom of working with your neighbors for the betterment of your community. Freedom that can be anybody's pleasure is everybody's job. Music for this program is arranged by Dick Arant. Next week at 9.30, Jeff Regan, investigator, brings you another thrill-packed half hour with his story of the house by the sea. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.